guys are probably wondering why I have my assistant with me with no shirt on. Uh, it's not just for your viewing pleasure, it's so that I can share with you guys some super important information about every painter's most important tool, your paintbrush. Um, at, here at Silly Farm we carry, I think, probably di over 100 different brushes. and So hopefully I can clarify uh, which brushes do what, uh, what is their main use, and which ones you need in your kit versus ones you can just kind of leave home just for practice. Um, and hopefully this will help save you money and save you time uh, and be better shoppers. So let's get started. Now, in my kit I really only carry about four to five brushes. I have um, an oval or a filbert brush, which it has a round edge. The good thing about uh, filbert brushes is that they really come in all sizes. Now they are awesome. This is a body brush and this one is a little bit smaller. It's good for petals. This one has a little bit longer. But really what makes a chisel brush is that it has this nice kind of oval edge to so it. So this particular oval brush has a little bit longer of bristles. And um, for me, I really like it to cover over the mouth area right here or cover <laughs> over the eyes right inside of there because it's that nice shape and one sweet swipe or one swipe to kind of fill in the entire muzzle area and you have this one which is slightly smaller but it's excellent in my opinion for making little flower petals um, it's also good for making medium-sized teardrops um, this particular chisel brush is a body brush so when you're covering large areas whether it's the face um, if you've seen our Aussie mermaid video she uses this one to cover the entire eyelid uh, because as you can tell it's large enough that you can do it so that if she was coming right up off of the skin or if you're trying to make huge areas block in color this is the brush to do it this particular brush is made by paradise and it's an awesome brush because for body painting it has just enough bristles and a nice edge on it so you can cover lots of area with clean swipes um, the last one is the paradise chisel brush and this one's a little bit flatter with still a rounder edge so it has a little bit wider base also an excellent brush for covering and, and blocking larger areas on the face nice and wide for the corners of the eyes and it's also good to make our flower petals which we're going to do right now to take my chisel brush and I'm just going to load it with the first color and then I'm going to dip just the tip in a lighter color okay so I'm picking up a second color just on the tip it's hard to see in this lighting but my brush has two colors on it so I'm double loading it so I'll make quickly just a little flower right here so if you press and pull it in then you can see the two-tone flower that I'm creating by just pressing and pulling it in a circle for making leaves so I also picked up two shades of green so right inside of there I'm going to press and twist to a point and press and twist to a point. So the good thing about this brush is that it has a nice tip on it so that you can do your nicer thinner lines there but it's also excellent like I said for making those nice bolder round edges. This type of specialty chisel brush which is called, this one is actually called a flora brush and it's another type of chisel because it does have that round tip on it, it's flatter but it has this nice point on the tip. So this is a really cool brush for one making flower petals but two making leaves and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, with my bright leaf arty cake and I'm just going to go back and forth what to do is I'll work off of it here. So I'm going to start off on a very straight point, press and twist to the tip again and I'll come off and twist to the tip again now because this brush um, has a point on it it's a little bit easier to get those fine lines at the edge versus with your chisel brush which is a little bit thicker this brush is one of my favorite chisel brushes it's a number 10 Athena and I do carry this one in my kit frequently it's a little bit smaller than your chisel brush than your paradise chisel but I like it because I can make a few different flowers and I'm also a person who loves to do teardrops so this brush is a good teardrop brush for the face because it's going to be a little bit smaller than this one So if you press on the bristles and you move them in a circle you're going to get these nice petals just like that very simple or if you lay it on its side since it's a little smaller all I'm doing is also moving it in a circle you're gonna get thinner petals which also works very fast and easy so you will have a little bit different of a, a flower and the, the other great part about this brush like I was saying is for your teardrops on the face 
So if you use the flat side of it, you're going to be able to make round or bolder to your drops. Or if you use the side of it and you don't press as hard, you can make smaller teardrops. Another one of my favorite brushes is called a scruffy brush and it has this flat edge on it so it's almost like a mop brush and Donna Dewberry introduced me to this brush. I really like it. Um, it's good for the center of flowers. You've probably seen me use it for my teddy bears. So all I'm going to do to just kind of give that fanned out center to the flowers is I just got it wet and I'm going to dip it in a little bit of paint. Just, just kind of pounce it right in the middle of that flower, right inside of there, and right in the middle of that. So this particular uh, brush is going to give you more of that kind of fluffy, fanned out. You can use it for making different flowers. Um, you can use it, like I said, for your teddy bear. And you just kind of want to pounce it on the skin because it's going to give that kind of like blended effect. Now another one of my favorite, favorite, favorite brushes is the fan brush and this particular one comes from Mark Reed and, um, and it's really cool because it makes fast and easy butterflies and I'm going to rub it over the surface um, of an arty cake. Yeah. You can just lay it on the skin just like that and then lay it in the opposite direction and you have fast and easy uh, butterfly wings. Fly. Look I'm going to add a dot, teardrop and some, uh, some antenna and you have the fastest, easiest butterflies. And those are really good, especially for smaller kids uh, because there's no pain involved and it's really fast and easy. So this is a good brush to have in your kit, especially if you're still struggling with the free hand brush is like my all-time favorite. Um, it's brand new. It is called a double filbert brush and I love this brush. You've seen me do designs with it. If you've seen me on the road you know I love this brush. It has a split in the middle of it which is one reason why I love it because it makes two teardrops at once. The first thing that this brush does is it makes really cool flowers like daisies. And you're going to start off making a circular pattern. So I just press and pull in and just work in a circle. And you see how fast and easy that design can be. So just press, pull in, and work in a circle. And because the edge is already split, you have these really fast and super impressive daisies. The other thing that it does is it makes really good teardrops. So you see what I mean by making two teardrops at once? You just get this really nice kind of split pattern on the edge. Once you have this effect with your teardrops, now you can be really creative because you can go right on the edge and kind of outline it because it gives you that kind of rippled edge already, which takes the guesswork out of having to think about creating new designs. So if I wanted to, I could just bring each line in a little bit more. That changed it or you could come right off of it with a few spikes to also change up your design. Or if you're really, really creative, you can also go right on the edge of it and kind of blend in the color, just tap it out to blend it so that you get that nice shaded edge. So you see by, add, by having this brush to me, it's one of the best brushes to have inside of your kit. Brush is that you can also make cool skeleton teeth. Um, or any teeth. I know he's going to kill me, but that's why I'm zooming in just on. So if you want to do some cool skeleton teeth, you can just kind of press it down. And you can also make cool teeth, just like that. There. Or heading up. Because they give that perfect little tooth, uh, kind of that double tooth effect right inside of there. Square brushes are equally important because we use them with our arty cakes. They're also good for contouring and shading. Um, now most people think, okay, it's a square brush. I really can only do kind of flat edge designs. Not true. When you are using our arty brush and you press on it, when you press on your brush and your handle, look what happens. You end up making this round shape and I'll show you what I mean. So it's good to have two sizes in your kit. I try to keep a number 12 and I try to keep about a 3 fourths. This one's a little bit bigger. This is a 1 inch. But those are the two sizes that I try to keep inside of my kit. So, so like if you want to use it to make your little leaves, so I would just wiggle, wiggle, press, and then bring it back around. 
to make my small leaf. Okay, so since I'm running out of room, I asked my model to stand up just so I can show you the importance of having a larger brush. Even though this is a square brush, if you're going to be using arty cakes, if you're going to be using um, any of your rainbow cakes with your brushes, it's important to have one of, of this size or a little bit smaller inside of your kit so that you can be able to create these designs. So like I was saying, if you press on the handle, and you round it out, you get these really nice uh, round shapes. So I'll just work it in a circle. And even though it's a square brush, I'm getting these beautiful round shapes from it. Um, this brush is also good for doing several different shapes. I can do another loop, flip it around, come up on the point and bring it down. And then I have kind of like my uh, peacock feather. So you have several different possibilities using your flat brush, but especially if you're gonna be doing anything with your arty cakes, you wanna be able to have this size brush inside of your kit. So the last brushes this brings me to um, is our ever popular round brush and then it also a deer foot brush or a dagger brush i loaded it with two colors okay and then all i'm going to do is work on a slant with it so i bring it down and it has that edge on it so i have a roundness and an edge and a roundness and an edge and that gives you the flexibility of having kind of a flatter sharper surface um, even if you wanted to go a little bit sharper, at least you have this nice point on it so that you're going to be able to get the shapes that you're looking for. So most of the round brushes, uh, they are labeled by, you know, a three, a four, a two, a six. The higher the number, the thicker the brush is. So I like to use this brand. It's called Low Cornell. I call them the gold grip brushes. I really like them because the bristles usually stay nice and pointy. I prefer using synthetic Taclon brushes over uh, sable or pony hair brushes because those brushes tend to be too soft for me. It's a matter of preference. I encourage you to try the ones that you like and then you make your decision. Load up my round brush and when you load your brush you want it to pretty much be in its original shape and you want to load all the way to the ferrule. The reason being is because you want your brush generously loaded so that you're going to be able to make. Uh, moving on the very top of it, you're going to make dots of all sizes by pressing. You're going to be able to make, by pressing and just working on the tip, you're going to be able to make these dots by just using the tip of your brush. You're also going to be able to make your teardrops and very, very thin lines and thicker lines. You're going to be able to do outlining using your brush and it's probably the most important brush that you're going to use in face painting because it's the most versatile again we use it for our teardrops and not necessarily just this one but the most designs that us face painters do involve using teardrops involve drawing so your flat brush is excellent and these specialty brushes like your, your dagger brush and your chisel brushes, they're excellent to have in your kit. But when you think about the one brush that you can't live without, it's going to be a round one. I like to use the number four because as you can tell, I can do a lot of outlining with it. I can go thicker and I can go thinner. I can, you know, just draw with the tip and make these really swirly thin lines and be very delicate with it um, or I can go bolder and press on the handle to get a very thick outline. So it really depends um, on your preference but so far I like a number four the best and if you need one brush in your kit you're gonna need a good round one. I hope I was able to shed some light on the different brushes that we carry and a brush to help you. Uh, if you've seen any of these brushes, hopefully you'll enjoy some of the things I've showed you and then it'll help you make a better purchasing decision. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, guys.